This is the Platinum Podcast. Welcome to the Platinum Podcast, Michael. Thank you very much, Joe. It's a pleasure to be here. It's about time this happened. Yeah. Like, I've I've been I've people moan at me for ages. They're like, when are you getting Michael on? When are you getting Tom on? When is the crew coming on the Platinum Podcast? Yeah, I mean, to, to be fair, I didn't expect to be doing a podcast, let alone, um, you know, the, the last year. Never mind, you know, when you messaged me last week, I didn't expect to be doing it this week. So, yeah, it's uh, it's a big a big shock to me. Um, if we had asked me like a year ago, I definitely would have, wouldn't have thought I've been doing a podcast with anyone, to be fair. So. Yeah. What were you doing? Okay, well, that's a great that's a great place to start. Where were you at a year ago, man? So a year ago... Um, yeah, coming up to a year ago, I was just doing my own thing. My dropshipping business was really getting off to, um, had been off to a great start, was really just compounding. Um, we'd done our first million pound in sales the, the pre, you know, at the end of the previous year. We'd just get into the whole lockdown situation as well was coming along. And uh, myself and my business partner, Craig, we started growing other aspects of our business. We have a virtual assistant agency, which was, starting to gain some traction. Uh, we had been heavily putting our heads into Amazon FBA, but we hadn't just got started yet. So that was a case of, um, you know, accumulating funds and accumulating knowledge to be able to take the leap into that. Um, and then we started getting involved with with some of the guys at Platinum or what, what Platinum was previous to that. So everything kind of went from like not the 60 really really fast sort of coming up to two year ago um which was really really exciting i was still working in my nine to five job at this at this point in time but was uh work you know working from home i was kind of getting a bit of a feel for what life would be like if my job in the bank moved to a more work from home and a family friendly hours kind of thing so uh, I also learned what it was like to live at home with two children from nine to five and try and do work and try and grow a dropship business and multiple other businesses on the side. So it was very, very intense. It seemed to just every day was just passing with a, with a blink of an eye. It was it was pretty, pretty crazy time, to be honest. And with everything else going on in the world as well was was just insane. Yeah, right. How were you juggling that? So what was your full time job? What that you were doing alongside dropshipping at the time? So my full-time job was a mortgage advisor with a retail bank. Um, so basically helping people buy their first homes, helping them remortgage their homes to do their home improvements, uh, which, you know, to some degree was pretty, pretty cool. You know, there were certain aspects of the job that I really enjoyed. I like talking to I like talking to the customers. I like seeing them get from from their journey of not having a clue what a mortgage was to, you know, getting the keys to their first home. So there was definitely aspects of the nine to five that I enjoyed, the people side of it. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of what I did um, in the office. You know, it wasn't it was a nine to five. It was you know ap appointments, maybe three or four appointments a day, um, and a lot of admin work you know, in between pretty much. So most of the time wasn't really exciting, but there was those moments when when people genuinely felt uh, or you genuinely felt gratitude from the people that you were you were dealing with really, which was the which was the cool side of it. Yeah, that's that's an interesting topic actually, because obviously a hell of a lot of what Platinum University is about is teaching people what they weren't taught in school. What portion of people that came to you actually had an understanding of what a mortgage is and how it works? Yeah, like not many people. And, and I mean, when, when you work in the bank for so long, because you, you live and breathe this stuff, you almost find it a bit unbelievable that people come and sit in front of you and they're like, OK, look, we want to buy a house. How do we do that? Um, you know, what what is a mortgage, essentially? And, and I mean, the, a, a lot of people were like that, you know, especially first time buyers, young people in their 20s. They didn't understand how it worked. They didn't understand how they could borrow so much money, how they would pay, it, how they would ever afford to pay it back, um, and and all the other questions that came with that. But I think generally in, in in the mainstream education, we don't really we don't really hear much about that until we start to think about 
I want to buy a house or, or, or even rent a house or even move this, you know, move house out of your parents' house. You don't really hear much about it until the time comes and you actually have to sit down and do it unless you've had um, siblings that have done it in the past and they can give you a bit of advice or your parents and things. But I think even from a p- parental point of view, I know when I was buying my first house and the advice my parents were giving me, things were a lot different when, when they bought a house to when to when I bought a house. You know, house prices were a lot lower, but interest rates were higher. But the gap between, say, someone's salary and the amount of money that they were borrowing was has, has just become massive. And people, ju- they just didn't really have a clue. I mean, even, even on a more basic level, people just didn't even understand how a credit card worked or how a, an overdraft worked and, and I know even on a, on a more basic level just bank, how bank accounts work and how debit card worked you know it's it's crazy it's, it's an absolutely mad concept to me that a we're not taught how money works we're not actually taught how to leverage credit I mean because debt isn't necessarily a bad thing if you know how to leverage it in the correct way right and we're not taught about how to use our own brains how does that make sense? Hundred percent. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. Even even general budget planning for people, they they do a lot more in schools now, where they send they send people out into primary schools and they teach them the the value of money. For example, they ask people, you know, what type of car do you drive when you want to when you grow up? What type of house do you want to have? How many bedrooms? And then they ask children how much do they think that would cost so you've got kids that have that have that say they want a ferrari and they think that a ferrari costs 100 pounds but on the other side of things they don't know how much a loaf of bread costs to compare the price of that car so i think there's there's definitely a little bit more going on at a basic level but not anywhere as as much as what what needs to happen really to, to really drill into people like this is you know this is an average salary this is how much your rent's going to cost or your mortgage is going to cost. This is how much your car is going to cost you. This is how much your electricity is going to cost you. There's, there's really not very much of that. Um, and there certainly wasn't any of it, you know, when I went to school or even my, my younger brother, he's eight years younger than me. There was nothing like that going on then. Um, but like I say, even now, it's, it's very, very minimal, really. Yeah, I think there's, there's such an ingrained mentality and that also, not only is there the lack of financial education, there's the lack of psychological education. I feel that school is completely designed just to get you a job rather than to get you the best life that you want, uh, which is exactly what we're trying to turn upside down. And as somebody that's come from a nine to five, but I, I haven't had a nine to five since I was about 18 years old. So I've been an entrepreneur, most of my life right most all my my working life pretty much but what was so what was the transition like going from that kind of mentality when you're in a space where everyone just has this idea of how things should be to then kind of going shit i'm making money i'm a drop shipping right now i don't need you to give me a paycheck i've actually got a whole different set of options in front of me I hope you guys are enjoying this episode of the Platinum Podcast brought to you by Platinum University, the real life school of mindset, online business and financial independence. Platinum University teaches you everything conventional education didn't. We're helping thousands of people create multiple passive income streams that create more money, time and freedom. We literally guide you through every step of the process with the help of our in-house experts and our powerful like-minded community groups. To get 35% off your monthly subscription and permanently lock in the discounted price of $39.99 and also get access to all of our mindset, Forex, dropshipping, stocks, crypto, network marketing and Airbnb content, visit the link in the description to join. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting because I would have said when I, was, when I was at school, I wasn't really an academic person. So my like to, to kind of break it down my report cards always said michael has the ability but just doesn't use it so michael's pretty <laughs> michael, michael pretty has the ability but he doesn't yeah, yeah, yeah. Do so like it was always kind of like michael's clearly smart but he doesn't actually apply himself to these to these subjects and i gravitated towards art i was really good at art i really enjoyed it therefore I got really good grades and it was it was all good and like physical education and stuff like that 
but anything that wasn't was I just you know I, I could have sat and stared out a window for two hours before I would you know read the book or revise for an exam I just I just didn't I just didn't really I didn't really understand at that point the value of knowing these things to me it was like why would I need to know that there was still there was always something in the back of my head that thought like why like why do I need to know this stuff and it's not really interesting to me for the most part um but I knew also that people were chiming in your ear all the time you know if you don't go to school you don't get the grades you can't go to university you can't get a good job a good you know a good job I was like all right all right so you kind of have to think right what am I good at what would I like to do and I kind of I kind of swayed towards like the artistic side I went I finished school I didn't go back to school because I, I just had at that point in time, I had no interest in education. I was out, I was like drinking, I was out partying all the time. I was like, nah, I just I want to go to college because college is easy. College is the like the easy passage. You know, you only and have six and you can keep drinking. Uh, yeah, exactly. And I went to an old boys school as well. So it's like, nah, I'm not going back there for another two years. <laughs> I wouldn't have been going back either. Um, so I went to college and and then you suddenly realize in college, like no one cares if you're there or not. So it's like no one's even like. No one's even caring if I'm here or not. So that kind of went by the wayside. Got shitty jobs, worked in call centers. And then it was like you had this had this moment where I was like, no, nah, I just went, I went off to Ibiza. I went off party and my parents were like, Jesus, like Michael, you need to like sort it out. Otherwise, you're just gonna end up like a bum pretty much. So I was like, okay, there was like a moment of realization where it was kind of like, right, okay maybe I maybe I do need to get the proper job because if I don't get a decent job I'm not going to meet a decent girl I'm not going to get it you know I'm not going to be able to afford a decent house um let's see what I can do and I, I started applying for these jobs civil service bank all sorts um I got accepted for the civil service um and the bank at the same time decided to decide to go work for the bank um started working my way up and then very soon I like I thought like my parents thought this is like an important job it's a really good job and for me it felt like really important I was like going to work every day like from going from partying every weekend to then going to work in a suit and tie I started to get that illusion of like wow like I'm I'm important here and I seen like all these opportunities to work my way up in the bank started working my way up in the bank this was really cool you know, got the nice stuff, got, you know, was able to afford a house and all the rest of it. Um, and then soon after that, the more you kind of, the more you kind of grew up and the more you kind of learn, you kind of realize that you are just a number and you're like, like you could drop dead tomorrow, you could be replaced. And all the whole time I was thinking like, I need to do something else. So like I was digging around, um, I'd always done eBay. I'd always, I'd always had this entrepreneurial kind of, sort of like like mindset but just didn't have the focus or just didn't know what I was going to do so I mean for years I'd done buying and selling stuff I was you know buying and selling um art toys limited edition toys um just kind of stumbled into it I uh, didn't really realize that I was going to make a lot of money I just really enjoyed this stuff and got like deep into the niche and then realized wow there's actually stuff here that I can pick up and then flip straight away and there wasn't this whole reseller vibe back then you know we're going back maybe 10 15 years there was resellers but now it's like a whole game um so i started doing that um while i was working making a few quid here and there in and out of it i was burning mix cds from from dj sets and in, in different places and i realized there's like this market of like it's really hard to like get these these things so i was like burning cds selling them on ebay you couldn't do it now but i was firing out all these cds and doing all this other stuff and then stumbled into stumbled into drop shipping, which was you know fast forward a while a while away, and then just realized like there's so many other people out there doing similar stuff, and I was like, there's drop shipping, but there's also all this other stuff. So I'll focus on this. I'll see where this takes me. But at the same time, you know, there's there's been a there was a lot of other ideas coming along, and I thought like I want to do this. How do I do this? I want to do this. How do I do this? Um, so you kind of kind of just jumped into the drop shipping it took me by surprise because I didn't really expect it to go anywhere I always expected to make some money on the side and it was all about money 
so at the time, um, you know, when you've got like it, when you've got a house, you've got bills, you've got everything else, you still want to live like a nice life. So it was like, let's try and make like more money. And then the more I got into drop shipping, the more I realized as I kind of grew up and you know, as kids came along and stuff, I was like, it's not really all about the money, it is more about the freedom. So I was like, in this position now when the dropship was doing really well. I was like, should I leave the bank? Should I not leave the bank? And then you kind of add on another piece to the puzzle. Um, you know, you start doing something else like the VA agency or like some affiliate market and you start building up the income streams. And you start to think, right, actually this is now overtaking the income that I make on the bank. But you've got the security of the bank, you've got this pension, you've got like sick pay, you've got all this stuff. All this stuff that they tell you you need because they want to they want to peg you into this institution of you need us more than we need you. Um, and you need a pension, you need this, you need that. And when you kind of get out of that and you start meeting other like-minded people, other entrepreneurs, you realize... You can build your own pensions, you know, you can, if you're sick, you can still get, you know, you can still get all the other insurance if you want to, if you want sick pay or, you know, you can, you can have other savings that you can lean back on rather than just always relying on your one paycheck month to month. You can start building passive incomes. You can start, you know, buying property that could be essentially a pension. And like I said at the start, when I was in this lockdown situation, you just, I could, I could see so much more. I could see so clearly that the amount of freedom that I could have, um, as much as the children were challenging and like there was a lot of shouting and a lot of tears <laughs> for a lot of months, you could see that like, this is the like, this is what I needed. This is what was, you know, this was missing because when you work a nine to five, you're coming home, your kids are going to bed, you know, you're spending all this time at the weekend, whereas you, you can do all this stuff, you know, at any time when you want. Um, you don't have to ask your boss if you if you want to go to the dentist or you get your hair cut or if you decide you want to go to Tesco's to, to pick up some food or whatever. So it started to become more of a freedom shift from a money shift, whereas obviously money's important at the same time because you have to think about long-term future and pensions and things, but it was really during that lockdown that it was like, nah, this, this isn't for me. Um, you know, as much in the early days, I loved the job, the opportunities in the bank as well, just started to shrink and shrink and shrink because retail banking started to, in my eyes, it was dying. Um, so many brokers now can offer mortgages from, you know, hundreds of banks, whereas we're, con you know, you're confined to just selling, the products of that bank, for example. So, you, and you've seen the digital banking coming in. I started to see like, almost like my job isn't going to be around in five years time, you know? So that was, that was another big point because, you know, realistically AI is going to take over my job. You're going to fill in a mortgage application. You're going to get credit scored. You know, if we look way back in banking before credit scoring, there was, you know, you went and met the bank manager. They had a look at your financials. They got a read for who you were as a person. And they would say yes or no, you know, credit scoring come in, computers. Now everything's just going to be based on your overall profile. And do they really need me to sit there and go through all this? Probably not. You know, they'll probably have YouTube videos or, you know, tutorial videos and all this stuff. So I kind of knew that my job was dying and there was nowhere that I was really busting to kind of jump to the next level, like manage people. I didn't want to go into management or manage people. So... I was like, this needs to happen. And when I met Platinum University and then you start speaking to all these other people, then it opens your eyes even more. You know, the I think I've learned an awful lot from every single one of you guys in, in, in a completely different way, you know, for yourself, the mindset side of stuff, James, like the entrepreneurial side of stuff, like Lewis is just, you know, all over the back end and technology and the finances and everything else. And yeah that just kind of takes you on that on that path where everything you can just see all this compounding of you know if you keep doing the things you love and keep your finger on the pulse then you can do everything you want and still have control of your own life plus it makes you stay it makes you stay focused because 
in the bank, I knew I knew whether I did a good job or a bad job, I was still getting the same pay at the end of the month, you know, and there was no real incentive to like really push yourself any further. You kind of did the job that was expected of you and you were getting paid the money that you knew you were going to get. So there's, there's an interesting sense. shift that I'm hearing you speak about in amongst all of that. And it's the it's the shift of safety. The only real reason, unless you love your job, unless like you're a nurse, you love caring for people, you're a teacher, you love looking after kids, whatever it is, right? If you have a job that you don't particularly love, you're doing it for a paycheck and you're doing it for security. You're not actually doing it for anything else. When the realization sets in that this isn't security anymore because your job's not going to be around forever, there is a different way, what, what is really left? There's no real reason to do it anymore. And like you said, you can get your own pension. You can sort out your own finances. You don't need them to do that. You don't need these perks anymore from a job, right? Yeah, hundred percent. That the safety net was a big thing because I knew that I didn't really like it, but there was also a lot of safety. So it paid the bills. You know, my parents thought like, you know, my son works as a mortgage advisor in a bank, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's great. I mean, I did pick up, you know, some formal education through the bank, like doing exams and things like that, that, that would have been easy to get other jobs and go into financial advice. But at the same time, it was like, that. it's just boring. It doesn't, you know, for me, it's it's not that exciting. You live from month to month. And I, I don't think if I earned 2,000 pounds or 10,000 pounds working in a bank job, that it would be anywhere near as fulfilling as, as kind of what you're doing now. But also the kind of shift, from a safe there's a safety net kind of aspect and then there's also like a there's there's also the fear of what will people think so i was always like wow like first of all what will my mom and dad think if i say like i'm leaving the bank the first question is will be like what do you why like what are you going to do because no one knew like what i did so like i basically built this drop shipping business and, and the other satellite business that kind of came along with it, the only people that knew were my wife, um, like a couple of really, really close friends who didn't really know the ins and outs of it. They, like they didn't know how much money I was making, how big it was. They just knew that I did like a little bit of something on the side that to be honest, I think a lot of the time they thought it was so trivial that they didn't really they weren't really interested in it anyway they just did, it was like oh yeah great like whatever um so there was that like fear and and I, and I remember like during this whole process i started listening to gary v and he talks a lot about like stop giving a shit about what people think you know because at the end of the day what what does it matter what joe down the street or your auntie fucking that you did you, you only see at funerals thinks what you're doing fuck so, out like, I like Joe personally. I think he's all right. Fuck <laughs> Andy. Joe's all right, you know. Yeah. So that was kind of like a big thing. So for me, it was getting over that fear factor of going like, "Am I actually doing this?" And like, what do I tell people? And and still now, I bump into people and they're like, "Oh, you left the bank. What what are you doing?" And I'm and I I find myself telling them like I. Yeah, I do like I sell stuff on eBay <laughs> and they look up. Like, <laughs> Everyone automatically thinks of like your nan who's like yeah, going yeah, through yeah. the garage and it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. found me old slippers and they were new in the box. So I decided to sell them on eBay. <laughs> but like I get, I get these looks from people and they're like, just this, this shocked impression of like, oh yeah yeah good yeah good luck with that and you can kind of <laughs> you can kind of see them walking away thinking like this guy's fucking insane he's like <laughs> the bank and he's selling stuff on ebay like how does that work how does that work and i just leave it at that because do you know what i just i just don't care anymore and that's that's kind of where where it lies at the minute and I don't even go into any detail about all the other stuff. I just kind of, that's kind of where I leave it and let them, let them think whatever, whatever they want, because you know, the people that are important to me know that my wife was really supportive, which was cool. Cause I didn't expect her to be so supportive because she also comes from that mentality of you need a good job to be able to do good things, to be able to live your life and all. And she, she is in the care sector. So she's a physio. So she, does really enjoy her job she really enjoys helping people and that's that's absolutely fine and she's done well out of it she's progressed and she really enjoys it so that's perfect but 
through the other freedom that we've managed to to provide she's also dropped down to four days a week so and hopefully we'll drop down to like part time so that she can then you know see more of the children have a bit more freedom and all these sorts of things but the fear and the safety net are the two biggest things and I don't think I could have ever done it without and this might sound stupid or cheesy or whatever but I don't think I could have done it without Platinum University because I didn't see that I didn't see that side of things I only the, the only people that surrounded me were people that have a nine-to-five job and people that didn't have people that didn't have jobs at all. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, Don't so listen to those life. guys. They're they're either drug dealers or they're broke. So yeah, so I mean, you've you've got people that are in and out of jo jobs, too much partying, um, you know, what, whatever else. And like, it, it's so true. And you start to realize all these things that you've read over the years. Like, you know, you you're a your makeup is like the five people that you're around the most, and. You know, the, it's it's just so true. It's so true. But I, I didn't realize a lot of this stuff, even the mindset stuff, like, you know, for me, it was like hocus pocus, like, you know, really, you know, and then you start going, you start listening. <laughs> I'd love to, I'd love to, th I'd love to have seen your face when you're watching the first few videos, you're like, who's this dickhead then? What's do, it, what's you know what, do you know what though? It's like, if I hadn't known who you were, where you came from, and I had a seen a YouTube video, I probably would have thought, what a load of bollocks. But when you kind of know the people and you kind of get a feel for that person before you have to hear what they have to say in terms of their their job role, let's say, then you have to sit up and take notice to some degree and think like, well, this guy's done this guy's done all right for himself. These guys are listening to him. These guys are like maybe this stuff, maybe there's a lot more to it. Um, and I know mental health gets a bashing and all this kind of carry on because males aren't meant to be good at all that stuff. I'm still, I'm still not good at all that stuff either, but I'm better than what I was a year ago, which yeah. is cool. Well, one thing I want to say to you, I think you've got fucking balls because <laughs> it's one thing to go on an entrepreneurship journey and go against all the conditioning that we have and go against all of the opinions of other people. It's so one thing to do it by yourself. It's a totally different thing when you've got a family because it's a whole different level of safety. There's the safety for yourself. And then there's the, the fact that you're responsible for young children, like in the eyes of your wife, in the eyes of your kids, that level of responsibility. So to be able to have conviction in what you're doing and just going, do you know what, I'm doing this. That takes balls, man. So I want to acknowledge you for your big, fat, hairy balls. Yeah, it's it's crazy when you think about it, though, because it's just such a difficult leap. The The first jump is, like, by far the hardest. And then once you're in, once you're in the space, then you almost just have to keep taking the jumps. So, like, there, there is no, there's no barrier then. The barrier comes completely down. So, you know... If you want to jump into the next venture, there's nothing actually stopping you because your safety net's gone anyway. You know, you, you're in it. All you have to do is keep moving, you know, and that's that's been the biggest part of it. It's like you hear all these people saying this stuff and you think like, OK, that's easy for you to say because you're Gary Vee or you're, you know, whoever the entrepreneur is that you're listening to. But when you do it, 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 it is, fuck, it's, it's, it blows your mind really because everything that you do from there on in you can just jump into it. like and i mean even this podcast for example it's like do you want to do a podcast you know like a year ago i would have said like nah like i can't do that i can't do it whereas now the attitude completely switches to all right i'm still going to be nervous but yeah of course, I, like i might never have that opportunity again so let's let's do this do you know what i mean so it's it's weird you just take everything as it comes and just keep make keep making the jumps yeah it's, that that shift that you're uh, describing there is so so powerful it's like you when you overcome you have this um kind of like this image in your head about everything should be so you live in this world i should have this job this everything should be safe i have my family i buy my house get the white picket fence get myself a nice little dog or the rest of it whatever it is that you've got in your head right 
And then as soon as you go against that and it works, you suddenly go, hang on a minute, everything that I thought to be reality is no longer reality. And I took a risk, it was scary. I was scared about it, but I've gone through the other side now and I'm all right, I'm alive, I'm happy. Things are arguably better. And once you've seen the other side on what is on the other side of that conditioning, there is no going back because every little thing that looks scary to you, everything that looks like an obstacle suddenly just becomes a challenge and it's actually quite exciting. And once you make that shift, it's, there's literally no going back. Yeah, it's, I think it's also the shift that like nothing has to, like, nothing has to be perfect. So like you, you make a lot of mistakes, you make a lot of bad decisions, but you don't, you don't, every decision or every step that you make doesn't have to, doesn't have to be the right one. You can, you can take losses along the way and, 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 you, and learn from them, you know, and that was one of the biggest things as well from taking the jump. It's like, whoa, like what, what if I mess this up? You know, what if I mess it up? And you, you, you know, you can't, you just can't think, no, I can't think like that. No, it's like, I got to do it. Um, I'm going to win. If you don't win, you you fix it or you you do something else. Not everything's gonna be the best idea. And once you kind of get over that mindset of, of everything having to be perfect and everything having to be a hundred percent all the time, then that also it also frees your mind to just be open to so many more opportunities that you may have passed on or you may not have started because you just thought, nah, I might, I might mess that up. And, you know, the, there's so many opportunities out there. You're not like, I'm not going to be good at everything. Mm. I'm not going to nail everything. But, you know, when, when you're in this space, you're surrounded by so many, like myself and Craig talk about this all the time. When you surround yourself with people like this and you get into these mindsets and these, you come through these challenges like one door opens another door it just seems to be if you keep your head in the game there's always something else popping up and there's always something else to explore i mean we just keep building a wish list of things to, to do and not everything happens like today or tomorrow it might not be next week it might not be next year but as long as you know as long as you keep thinking about these things and think like i can do this or i can't do this now but what would help me achieve this in six months time or a year's time or two years time or whatever and it's 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 incredible like my i've i like i've changed so much in, in a year um it's insane and it's changes that it's little changes that have that sometimes i have to kind of sit back and think like wow like i've actually changed a lot in a short space of time just because i've i've allowed myself to do it which sounds weird but like it's really, no, it it really, really it was, for, yeah. for a guy that was a bit not too sure about mindset. You don't have to talk a lot about overcoming the fear of failure, getting one percent better each day. You're touching on goal setting, manifestation. You're covering a lot of mindset topics right now, Michael. I've got to say, I feel like you're pretty immersed in it now. I know it, it's funny, mate, because I don't even get that into it. I don't talk about it that much, but subconsciously, without really thinking about it too much it's you actually do it like a lot of the time I think like I'm not good at this I'm not good at that I'm not good at this and then actually when you when you talk to someone else then you have that little moment of realization think like okay I, I, maybe I have taken some of that on board but I haven't really I haven't really noticed it until yeah, it's, I start it's, doing it's it. just perspective that's ultimately what it comes down to perspective is everything it's whether it be glass half empty glass half full whether you believe the world is hostile or it's your friend, all these different concepts. It's just about how you view the situation and you change your perspective on so many different things. And sometimes you just need to be introduced to the right people and overcome the right, overcome the right obstacles yourself, which is exactly where you're at right now. Um, tell me more about how supportive the community has been for you and how big an impact that's had on your journey. I think the biggest the biggest impact has been the overwhelming acceptance or like gratitude of such a group of people that where where i come into it as someone that thought like 
like why would and i still do like even when i'm even when i'm doing this i'm thinking like why would people want to listen to me or why would people want to take my advice i mean i'm just one person um that okay that i've done it, the money out of drop shipping yeah but i, I still kind of yeah <laughs> still still kind of undervalued like we myself and craig say this all the time where you know you kind of undervalue yourself or you don't you kind of just you kind of just crack on and then when people are actually saying like this has been a massive help or you know you've been amazing at this or that was an amazing webinar or an amazing one-to-one -one. look where my sales have grown since i've chatted to you and you, you don't get that in the nine to five like i mean like i could probably count on my hand the amount of times like a customer has really said you know that was really great you know real i really appreciate you taking the time to like literally go through all my finances and help me buy a house and this because i think a lot of it is like i'm coming to the bank you are the bank manager um you're meant to do this for me whereas when you get out and you start speaking to people one of the biggest things is like people actually want to be there you know so many times i would have had appointments that didn't show up for whatever reason they wouldn't have phoned they wouldn't have said anything you know i've i've yet to have anyone not show up for a one-to-one -one or someone that was going to take a call or someone that was going to call me you know that that's there's there's never been a point in time where anyone hasn't kind of done what they've said they want to do and for me that's it, it speaks volumes it just says a hell of a lot about the community um but also within the community there, there's there's so much positivity everybody genuinely wants to see people win in the world where i came from people would rather see you fail which is probably why i kind of just kept my head down and didn't and didn't really elaborate on what i was doing or tell anyone about my plans or you know still no one really knows the half of it and a lot of it was because I, if I knew that I had posted something into the WhatsApp group about, I don't know, let's say, you know, whatever drop shipping or whatever, I would have I probably would have got the piss taken out of me. Like, what's that? What are you doing? You know, and then the compound comes where everyone then jumps on that to take the piss. Whereas <laughs> if that's, if that's a good example or not, I don't know, but a lot of it has to do with people in my world would have just they would have rather see you fail than succeed and i think that's i think from the community and from speaking to a lot of people i think that's a very genuine thing in a lot of people's lives where that's a real thing whereas in our community in platinum community i think a lot of people or most people genuinely want to see people win and they push people on there's no fear of like there's no fear of putting something in a group and no one will make you feel stupid no one will you know take the piss out of you you know and that's that's a massive thing because you know even from a mentality and mindset point of view that's that could be like a make or break so someone could put you so you could say to someone in the street like a friend that's been your friend for 15 years i'm going to start up an instagram marketing agency and they'll just fucking laugh at you and you'll think all right i'll just not do that and like <clears throat> just ridiculous way knowing what i know now that's just a ridiculous way to think because you know you could be the best instagram advertising marketing agency that that's out there in the world but because your best friends told you that's a shit idea and they don't even know anything about it but you take their advice is yeah, insane everyone's words. eager to give out their opinions for sure yeah and and it's, zero it's, knowledge yeah. or understanding and a lot of it just comes from a space of they're like i can't do this i don't think i could do that therefore you can't do that yeah exactly and i think that's the, the community solves that problem because your best friend might say it's shit but there'll be 500 people in a in a discord channel telling you that's a really great idea i think you should go ahead and do that and like you know hopefully on a 500 to 1 basis that person will go and do what they want to do yeah. which to me is, a, is an amazing thing and you know i, I would have been like i would have been a negative i would have, wouldn't have been a completely really really overly positive person i would have again coming from that kind of safety net background i might have said like 
all right, don't quit your job just to like jump into something you don't have a clue about. But def- like you definitely want to, you definitely want to give it a go. Knowing what I know now, so um, and there's just so there's so much knowledge in those groups. It's it's just crazy. It's crazy. I, I'm I'm definitely still a reckless madman. There's definitely a part of me that'll go, yeah, quit your job, just just give it everything. You got no plan B. You're probably more likely to make it work because you've got no <laughs> other option. And if it doesn't work, then Oh well, you gave it a go. You probably learned a bunch of shit, and you can probably try something new. Give it and get another job if you want to. You might as well keep just going at it. I don't know. I don't know if that's good advice or it's reckless. Uh, Uh, Probably a lot of parents would be like, "Joe, shut up, mate. Don't say that. Don't say that to my children." I mean, going back to my wife being supportive and stuff. I mean, she was like, "Do you know what? If worse comes to worse, you can go and get another job again." Um, And like that is the thing like if you want to go and chase a dream which might be a dream at that time that could come reality and you know you're you're forfeiting your nine to five which you know realistically you could go out and and get another job then fuck it why not i mean and if you're a mcdonald's mcdonald's will still be hiring again in three months time you've got literally nothing to lose don't start telling me about security do you know do you know what my last day in the bank and again, people didn't know what I was doing. They were like, you're going off and you, you don't have any job. And I was like, yeah, bye-bye. <laughs> one, one, girl, one girl actually said to me, I can't wait till I see you in the drive through at McDonald's. And I was like, do you know yeah. what? If worse comes to worse, there's worse jobs. There's worse jobs. And in fact, when I compared to the bank job, I kind of thought like, you know, realistically, yeah, McDonald yeah. McDonald's are good payers these days. Like, you know, they're not. Yeah. It's not the worst firm to work for. But yeah, she said, "Yeah, I'll see you in the drive-through." And we still laugh. I still laugh at my wife about that. Like, but I mean, I've got yeah. this mental picture of you walking out of the bank, going, "I've got zero job, and I give zero <laughs> fucks." Now, yeah. fuck. <laughs> no, no, no one had a clue. Like, no one had a clue. I was like, "Don't worry about me." That's what I said. I just said, "Look, don't worry about me. I'll be fine." Yeah. Uh, I love that. I want to talk a little bit about dropshipping as well, like the yeah. uh, people that are just getting curious and just about to start on this journey. How quick can you replace your nine to five? Let's say an average nine to five. I think, what is it like between 1,200, 1,500 quid in the UK? How quick with your level of expertise, let's assume knowing what you know now, how quickly could you take a store from zero to replacing that McDonald's, KFC, whatever job it is that you're not really too keen on right now? Yeah, I would say like if you're if you're on the money with everything that you're doing and you're you proper wanted, I would say like a good six months, like six months, eight months, and you could replace an like an average income. Or I mean, you you could replace, you could pay your rent and you could eat. Do you know what I mean? If you went off and traveled to a different country outside of the UK, you could you could do it and you could do it for less money. You know, if you obviously living in the UK, you're gonna have a higher you know, a higher cost of living and stuff. But I would say like six, six to eight months. Um, and there's a there's a massive compound effect if you keep, you know, if you keep jumping through the hoops and you keep, you know, overcoming all the obstacles, it almost it, it becomes easier to make more money the longer that you stick with it, if that makes sense. So it's just a case of you do more of the same because you already know what you're doing. You've already got a blueprint. Um, you've already got foundations built and you can afford to take more risks as well. So when you build up like one store, then you can piggyback off the back of that to a second store or a third store or dip your toe into some other form of drop shipping. Um, you can start, you know, you can you can take physical goods and start selling them, you know, even outside the drop shipping stuff. But yeah, I mean, if you really put your mind to it, there's, there's guys in Platinum University that I've known for, you know, all of them less than a year, some of them less than six months. And, you know, there, there's still a fair few people that are that are making a good, um, solid wage out of out of drop shipping. And some of them have left their jobs. Some of them still work their nine to five jobs and do this on the side. Like I, I built my, you know, essentially what was a million, a million pound drop shipping eBay store whilst having a nine to five you know, wife, two kids, still doing all the things that I enjoy doing outside of 
you know, outside of the nine to five and outside of the drop shipping, you know, you just start outsourcing things. You know, once you build up a bit of an income, you get VAs to do different pieces for you. You get you gain that time back and then you start using that time to to build other things. So it's just a case of you need to put the work in in order to get to that stage and you need to jump through the hoops. But it's like everything you, you can you can do it. You can it can be done. If so, yeah. like the attitude that I had, if someone else can do it, I can do it. I just need to find my own recipe to to be able to make it work for me and around my lifestyle and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's what it's all about, right? We're all looking for different recipes that suit us rather than just picking the, the one fit template that just is given to everybody to assume that it gives you the best life ever, right? That, this is why I love this dropshipping method. So obviously I used to do Shopify dropshipping. So obviously involved in that, you create your own website, you search products, you advertise them, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of stuff that you have to do in between times. With this dropshipping method that you talk about where you just source products from Amazon, Costco, Walmart, and then sell them on eBay, you've got pretty much no upfront costs, right? You don't need to pay for advertising. I mean, what, what, does, what does it look like? What realistically do you need to get started using this with dropshipping method? Yeah, so I mean, essentially the barrier to entry is virtually nothing. Um, it is wise to have like a couple of hundred quid to, you know, get, get your first software package. I mean, we prefer to use software because obviously it automates everything. There's a lot less headaches. Everything can be repriced and stock checked from, you know, your supplier. You could start with zero software whatsoever. When I was testing dropshipping, first of all, so the, 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 the principle of dropshipping, as you said, is you find a product on a retailer's website and you basically just copy the exact product on your eBay store. So a smart watch from Amazon, you just take the pictures, you take the description, you take the title and you just list that on eBay as you would if you had that smart watch for sale at your home um, the exact same way. So before I got into softwares and all this kind of stuff i thought like i already do ebay let's let's just like try this out so i i think i got like about 10 15 products that i thought would sell quite well from amazon they were like you know like i say i say smart watch because that's something that i that i listed at the start um and i listed some uh i listed some whey protein and some uh like g gym kind of stuff um, I can't remember what else, but I, I started listing like one or two items a day and it wasn't selling. So I thought like, like this can't be as easy as what it's made out to be. And then all of a sudden one day, about five, probably five to seven days in, the smartwatch sold. And I was like, whoa, shit, this works. So I went on to Amazon, purchased the smartwatch, sent it straight out to the customer. I think the profit margin was something like, I think I made like three quid on it. It was like, sweet this is this is like amazing um so it definitely works so for me that was the that was the the moment of truth where i was like people will buy stuff on ebay at a marked up price and i was kind of sitting going what, what are they going to say what are they going to say a couple of days later positive feedback really happy with the product i was like right no it definitely works so the product sold customers happy there's something in this there's there's definitely something in this listed more products realized there was all this other software out there got my next sale of i think it was like uh resistance bands or something like that went on amazon price had changed i was like shit okay so the price had changed for like whatever it was i had to take a two pounds loss so they ended up taking a two pounds loss and then thought like right okay i, I pretty much i know that, that i know the concept works I'd been watching YouTube videos. It was time to decide which software to go for. So I chose the software and I started listing and listing and listing. And, the, and then I realized the more you list, the more chances you have of selling. So if you've got 10 products, probably 10, 15, 20 of them are actually going to sell. And that was kind of, that was kind of it. And I think I paid like at the time, 20 quid for the software. I didn't have an eBay subscription at the time. I just was paying like, I had a, I had a, whatever it was like 30 pence a listing 
um, and then I had to fulfill the order. But at the time, my PayPal account, I was just fulfilling the order. As soon as the money came in from PayPal, that was, you know, I was using the same money that the customer paid me to pay for the item. So all I had to pay up front was like 20 quid. And in the first month I made like, I don't know, it was like 50, 60 quid, but it was enough for me to realize that this works, which was the most important thing. So I just thought like, right, if I've got this amount of products and I've made this amount of money, then I can list this amount of products and hopefully make X amount of money. But for the average person starting up now, I would say have a couple of hundred quid just because if you're new to eBay, PayPal, whatever else, they may hold your funds for a couple of days, for up to 30 days. So you want to have some funds just available as a bit of a cash flow. But I mean, realistically, you would spend the same amount of money you would get, you would need to start on a couple of nights out or a couple of meals out. You know, it's a very, very low cost of entry and you don't need all that money sitting there right away. It's absolutely crazy. Like, what other business can you set up that cheap with pretty much zero experience that's templated that you can follow a step-by-step -step process with zero capital Name yeah, anyone, I mean, anyone can anyone think of anything right now just at the top of your head i can't if anyone does know let know. me know we'll add it to the university as well <laughs> huh? prostitution maybe i don't know <laughs> yeah i mean there's there's an upfront moral cost of that um, which that will probably have a negative effect on your life long term. I know uh, because I've done some shit in business things in the past when I was younger. I did lots of shit stuff. I learned from it. Active integrity. This is, this is a shout out to anyone doing shitty business models right now. Don't. It's not a good move. Trust me. You'll hate yourself when you buy yourself. Thanks for the room. Mindset yeah. tip. <laughs> but yeah i mean if, if you put it into perspective basically one day i started with 20 quid subscription to build an, a, a 1 million pound ebay store which to, to be fair i didn't i didn't i never expected to see that that happen um and it kind of just crept up on me as well it was like it was always about you know if i made if i made 100 pounds this month kind of make 150 the next month you know then you get to like 500 and you think like okay i'm making 500 can i can i get like can i get 800 can i get a thousand you know so every for me it was all about setting like many milestones it wasn't about like it wasn't on day one i didn't think i'm gonna make a million pound store and, and it's cool that if people have big you know if you have big dreams you know absolutely brilliant but in my journey i just kept thinking you know, if I can make this, surely I can, I can make that. And that's the way, that's the way I compounded along. And, you know, I met my business partner, Craig, through, through like an eBay dropshipping uh, Facebook group. And we kind of put our heads together. We both kind of did the same thing. And then we went off and did stuff together. And we still, you know, we banged ideas about, and, you know, some things we've done, some things we haven't done, some things we've done that didn't work. And we might go back to those, but once, like I say, going back, once you're in that space and once you're doing it and once you realize that it's not a scam, you know, there's other people doing it, you can make money. The only person that can stop you from doing it is you. Um, you know, even when you have to jump through the hoops of eBay, there's lots of guys out there that, you know, when you get knocked down, they're back up again, they're back into it, they're, they're finding out, you know, if I can't do it this way, how can I do it another way? And they're, there's there's guys out there that you know where there's a will there's a way um and it's like everything the, the only person stopping you from doing it is is yourself and your own kind of work ethic or your own desire to to make it work and and, and make money out of it and you know I, I know guys that have got they've got call centers in india managing like hundreds of ebay stores like there's 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 just massive levels to drop shipping that that when you go really deep into it, like it, it can be taken to whatever whatever level really you want. I mean, the level that I'm at is phenomenal. You know, there's there's you know there's probably not a lot of people that do eBay dropshipping that that are at those levels that I know within the communities. But there, there's there's also like a smaller level above, which just it, it blows my mind. The amount of 
the amount of stores or the amount of staff or, or everything it's, it's crazy and I'm, I'm guessing they're making huge 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 coin it's it's okay. crazy I think it's an epic point to end on. If you could give anybody that's just thinking about getting into dropshipping, what would be your biggest and best bit of advice? I think the, big, the biggest thing for me and the thing that I've learned through my journey is taking action. You'll, you'll never do anything unless you actually start it. So even on my dropshipping journey, I, I, I like looked at dropship videos. I watched them for like weeks and maybe months. And kept thinking like i'll get into that i'll start doing that and i was like i was in a position where i already used ebay i was using ebay day in day out and i still didn't start and i probably i could have started three months earlier than than what i did and been three months on so anyone that's out there that is thinking about it just take action just do it i mean there's there's really no barrier to entry there's there's nothing stopping you from from trying it out and you're in the best place in the world because I didn't have any support outside of like scrambling around on YouTube videos. You know, I didn't have other, like a, a like a close knit network of people that are willing to help in the dropship world in general, you have this almost like, it's like a secret. If I'm making it work, I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to give away any of my secrets. Whereas in platinum, we do genuinely all help, help each other. So, you're in the best place to start, if anything else as well. But taking action for me is one of the one of the biggest things. I mean, there's no point in thinking things to death. And this is what I would have done. You know, what if and what what happens if that happens and what happens if that ha this happens? You know, you just got to go. You just got to take action and do it. And then you know, then see where that takes you. I love that, man. I love it. I think that's epic advice. I couldn't agree with you more. Take action. Um, and before we go, I just want to acknowledge you, man. Um, it's an absolute honor to have you as part of our community. Uh, like the time and energy you put into helping other people get to where they want to be is just such a huge asset to Patton University. And it's amazing to see your desire to help other people. It's exactly what Patman's all about. It's what myself and the other founders is what we want to create for people. Um, and having you help us do that, I've is it just means the absolute world to us. So thank you so much for everything that you do for Platinum. Uh, and thank you for growing with us, brother. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I really do. Um, and just just to end on that, you know, the, the shift from what I did in the bank to that kind of helping people, you know, that there was, that was kind of the good stuff. And I've transitioned that across now to doing something that I that I really love to do. So something that one, I, I do myself, I believe in the stuff that I'm telling people and I believe in the, I believe in the people that I'm, I'm talking to. So it's, it's just a massive shift when you do something because that's your job and that's what you have to do. So I have to tell that person A, B and C, even if I don't a hundred percent agree with it, because I know that they could go out and get a better rate with someone else. or this product isn't the best of that product. Now, when you have the freedom to say, like, this is what I do. This is why I do it. This is why I believe in it. There's no bullshit. Um, it makes life a hell of a lot nicer, a hell of a lot easier to talk to people about something that you really are genuinely passionate about and you do on a day-to-day -day basis yourself. You're not saying, like, go and jump off this cliff that I've never jumped off before, but you'll be fine. You know, take the leap, take action, because I've done it. You know, why not? Or even worse, selling a drop shipping course when you don't know how to drop ship, but saying, you've why never, am I drop shipping course? <laughs> or never, yeah, or you've never drop shipped in your life, yeah. Which is oh. what I learned, what I learned from from doing these things. And then you ask the person that that sells the course and they're kind of like, uh, I, I'm not really sure you need to go and ask someone else about that. Which has <laughs> just happened with just buy the course, fine. Which is which is weird. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of that. There is a lot of that. I love it, man. Um, where can people find you if they want, if they want coaching, if they want to speak to you about how they can get started drop shipping? Obviously, I know you're very active in the Patent University community, but where's the best place to find you outside of that? If anybody listening to this isn't already a part of Platinum, shame on you if you're not. But yeah. if they just want to find you and seek you out personally, I would say, just as you say, 100% Platinum University is going to be the place where you want to find me. Um, if you aren't involved in Platinum University, 
highly recommend that you do get involved in platform. <laughs> no I, biases whatsoever. Uh, no, absolutely no bias whatsoever. I'm a member of Platinum University as well and absolutely love it outside of everything else that I do. Um, I am on Instagram um, as I don't even, do you know what I use Instagram? I'm not that instagram but i my um michael underscore g 108 at instagram that's probably the next best place to find me but if you're not on platinum university you're 100 missing out 100 i love it thank you very much my man thank you joe this is the platinum podcast